Hi everyone, I'm Sloan from SloanBella.com and I'm back with another channeled celebrity video. This one is a much requested video on the late singer, songwriter and composer Kurt Cobain of the band Nirvana. Now, when I was starting to pick up on his energy, I went to his birth date first. He's a February 20th, 1967 Pisces with a lot of Pisces in his chart. Like he has an overabundance of Pisces. He is a water sign moon, a cancer moon. And here's the kicker. This surprised me a little bit, the Virgo rising. I completely understand Virgo rising, but it was interesting because immediately when I picked up on his energy, there was this foreboding um, sadness in this, this, this darkening of energy, almost like when you're in um, somewhere and the moisture comes down and it's a heavy cloud overlay. It felt like that. And then in a split second, he turned my energy to his childhood. He was quite the prankster and he was quite full of fun. He was extremely sensitive to everything and everyone around him. I mean, if you walked in the room and you were around him and you had one way of feeling something, he could pick up on that expression in a second and absorb it. He was extremely empathic just really, really empathic. What he does show me in his childhood is looking around at everybody in the room and everybody in his life and being like, how can I make you move faster? So he had this brain that was like, go, go, go. And it's almost like he was stuck in his body. So I do feel when he was born and came into his physical body, there was some sort of a discrepancy with what he ob observed outside of himself and then what he could physically do to make those things happen. So his mind was extremely quick and then it was hitting up against the wall of his body. So he was not able to express himself the way that he wanted to in the style that he wanted to. And he's kind of like knocking in my mind right now saying, I was just a massive malcontent. <laughs> this is what he's saying. Even as a little kid, he would stop what he was doing in order to challenge whomever was around him in order to change the course of what he was doing because he needed it to change in order to be able to feel it. He's showing me how he created music. And I know that in some of his interviews, he said that he was a lazy person, like he did it last minute because he was lazy. I'm gonna go, mm, not true, because it feels like what he was doing was trying to hook into the feelings of what he was writing, what the music he was doing. He needed to feel it. He just didn't wanna put it down on paper. He had to connect an emotion to it, so a feeling to it. So there's many things that he would watch and observe and see, and he would write about this because he felt something from it. So if he was in a room or an environment, even as a little kid, and he couldn't understand what was going on and he couldn't feel his way through the room, and I get what he's saying because as a psychic person, I work that way. If I can't feel your energy, even if it seems like it's been a good expression, but I can't feel it, I have to kind of hook into it. And he's showing me the same thing. So he, Kurt Cobain really operated off of in, intuition, psychic ability, um, empathy, intuitiveness, and that's how he created what he did. He did it last minute, and here's the kicker. He did it last minute to avoid procrastination is what he's telling me. Because it actually, <laughs> I'm getting like this. I'm like getting, don't say it. He has a persona to live up to. He's he's quite the character because although I felt the sadness around the day that he died, he's basically saying, don't ruin my image, okay? So he has this image, but he doesn't like to admit that he wants the image to be a certain way. And then he pulls my mind over to when he first started singing publicly, which I believe he looks to be in high school at this time. He looks to be somewhere in his teens when he started actually performing. And he's showing me that the reason that he was elevated to the status he was is because he was representative of the emotions of what everybody else was feeling. It's not like he was the best musician, as he puts it, the most attractive person. He was very attractive. I found him to be very attractive, but what he did was work against his own looks so that he could bring out that angst and that anger and do it. But the reason that he wrote so off the cuff and quickly, sometimes seeming not to be prepared in certain circumstances was, well, there's this whole other like cool side to him. It's like, I can't be bothered. And then the other side of him is, I don't want to obsess on it and I don't want to break it down because I'm a perfectionist. So I don't want to 
procrastinate on doing it, so I just do it. So he actually took action to avoid procrastinating so he wouldn't judge himself so it would be out there. That's what I'm seeing with him. It was a check and balance for him. He kind of knew that about himself. Very insightful and very intelligent person. When he started doing the music, he had an initial thrill and an energy, something that made him feel alive, like a live wire. It was coming from the other side. He, it was going where he wanted it to go, but there was also this breaks that he put on everything. Like he started to get famous and he says it happened so quickly for him. It happened like this. It was like really quick for him. And he also didn't want to give up his freedom. So there was a part of him that was very concerned with being tied down and not being able to be who he was. And then this other part of him was, but I want to do this, so I'm going to give it a try. But it turned very quickly when people realized his talent is what he's saying to me. He's saying that it turned very quickly. And again, when I say he's talking to me, I'm having images put in my head. So I'm trying to pick them up as they come through and explain to you what I'm getting. Some of it I got before, but right now he's showing me that as his music started to grow and as he got really well known, this was more difficult for him because he was being put into a position where it was going to be more about what other people wanted for him than what he wanted to do. So he felt confined by that. However, in the beginning, the way that he felt, he could take the energy and it poured into him. He came, it's, it's interesting because his childhood and the expression of that music came from being blocked or um, confined or I'll say the word imprisoned, but obviously he wasn't in a prison when he was a little kid, but there was that feeling of, I need to break free. So he's always bucking the system. This kid was bucking the system every which way he could. He wouldn't stay focused or do what people wanted him to do because he had to be a massive malcontent. That's the word he keeps saying. It makes me laugh because he's like, if you want me to do it, I'm not gonna do it. So he probably challenged every teacher he ever had, his parents, probably everybody in his life. He just didn't want to conform. And on the other side of it, he wanted very much to feel part of it, but if he couldn't feel it, so he wasn't operate, operating off of intellect. He was actually operating off of like, what he felt. So when you look outside and you look at a tree branch and it moves with the wind, that's how he operated when he was writing and creating. It's really quite extraordinary actually. And then he had these, these, these very dark moments where he wasn't sure who he was, almost as if two different people came out of his thinking. So there was a side of him that was one way and thought one thing and then this other side of him. So he had opposing thoughts within who he was. He was also exceptionally lucky. But as he got luckier, he was like, I don't want to be that lucky because there's, there's a responsibility or an obligation to it. So he was kind of funny. He was like, I want this, but I don't want this. So I think he had some foresight into what was going to be coming into his life and I was almost feeling like he was trying to put the brakes on everything before it happened. So he would go in and out. He would perform and do everything. And sometimes he laughs and says, I was just throwing shit at the wall and we made an album out of it. That's what he says. So there's times where he, I'm sure it was inspired and channeled and he doesn't recall the work that he put into it. So he probably looks at it like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. So he was both humble and he was both like, yes, I did that, but that's not who I was, but it is who I was. He says, I'm a representation of everybody. So I represented everybody at that time. Now he's from my generation, a year younger. Um, so he'd be turning 52 this year. He would actually be, he'd be 52. And it's hmm, something because as I'm thinking of that, I'm feeling very, sad that he's not here. I feel like he should be here. I feel as though his death was not the way that it was presented. I know it sounds conspiratorial, but that's not what I'm getting at. I really have this feeling like he should have been here. Um, what he is telling me as he got more and more famous and as he got more and more connected to things, he is showing me that he got less and less control. It's so funny. Okay, so he's showing me when he eats things, all right? He's basically letting me know that people were drugging him behind his back. He's, he is showing me that. Um, he always 
had, I'm getting like pains in my stomach. He always had issues with his stomach and digestion. I'm gonna put it in a different way to you and say that I feel that it was his solar plexus and that he was incredibly psychic, but he was blocking the feelings down here and maybe going up into his head. So I feel like that was part of the problem as well. So the stomach area with him was very lit up, okay? So this was a problem since he was a little kid. I don't find that odd for anybody that has a predominance of cancer in their chart. He had a cancer moon. So on an emotional level, when his emotions were at odds with what he was picking up around him or what people were saying to him, keep in mind, if you walked in a room, room around him and you had a smile on your face and you were super cool and happy, but you were mad inside, he can absorb that in a second. This was part of his problem and it all lives in your stomach. So the solar plexus area. So he actually needed probably to go to some kind of healer and fix the energy, the chakras and the way that they were moving because they were probably getting way out of whack. This was a problem for him. He wasn't really paying attention to the intuitive and psychic side of himself. He was going against that probably because he was a guy and probably because he was a musician and whatever and he had other stuff to do. And then he's showing me the drug factor. Now, the drug thing was interesting. He loved drugs, not unusual for a Pisces. Like anybody with Pisces in their chart, sun, moon or rising, they're gonna love the drugs and probably never spend a full day sober in their life. <laughs> Interest. So the stomach issues with Kurt were something that were caused, number one, because he had a cancer moon, number two, because he was receiving his information directly like when you receive it in the solar plexus area when they say you're going on gut instinct that's a primal thing he was operating off of that but somehow he was blocking it so he would have benefited from doing some kind of healing or some kind of clearing because he was literally blocking that energy in the stomach area the solar plexus area of his body but it's our primal instinct so when somebody says i got a gut feeling they're saying that that's coming from like literally it's an animal instinct and it's 99.999 percent accurate so if you feel like you're in danger and you get a feeling in your gut you are in danger he's also talking about when he started doing drugs now he says everybody knows i was on drugs as a kid because the doctors suggested that he be on drugs the reason he was put on drugs which is fascinating to me because they put these kids on drugs like him that are perhaps eclectic and quicker and moving at a different speed energetically and they want to dumb us down so that we can fit into school and fit into society. He never did. He caused chaos all the way through school is what he's saying. But he's saying so in a cute way. So I doubt his teachers like hated him. I think they were probably just annoyed that he was high strung and hyper and wanting to do certain things because he wanted to get through it. He could see the trajectory of his life and he couldn't quite get there. This was bothering him. So he was able to think six or seven steps ahead of other kids his age or other people his age. And this was part of the problem. This is why they medicated him. They also medicated him because he went in and out of moods. I don't think anybody understood how psychic and empathic he was. I really don't. I don't think he knew about it. I don't think he was told that in his family. I think if he'd have been told that, he might've had a different understanding of who he was and what he was doing as a child, what he was feeling. He really was intuitive. Um, it's a beautiful creative aspect and he was extremely creative. But what he's saying is, I created what you wanted me to be. So he's saying that it's almost letting go of the ego when he was doing his music. I'm sure he had an ego, don't get me wrong, but it's letting go of the ego. What I mean by that is he stepped into his creative mind and put aside the physical side of himself, which is why he didn't pay attention to the physical side of himself, except he's saying to get high. He seemed to really like to get high is what he's saying. He's not even pretending like that he did it for any reason. He just did it because he liked it, basically. He liked the way it made him feel. That's what he's saying. So I think the drug thing was something that he always liked. And again, that's not surprising for a Pisces person or even a Cancer Moon or even a Virgo rising. You know, they'll overachieve at anything. So he had this like drug seeking behavior, but he is telling me that people were drugging him against or behind his back. Like he was unaware of drugs that were being put into his either food or his drink, he had issues with that. 
And it's funny because the stomach problems got worse. I actually feel like he may have been slightly poisoned with drugs and I'm not sure who was doing this or why they were doing it because I don't feel he knows who, how, or why. I just feel that he is convinced that he was, something was being put into either his food or drink behind his back without his knowledge that was drugging him, seriously. I don't know if they were trying to calm him down or whip him up or what they were trying to do. You know, maybe they were giving him amphetamines to get him up in the morning and downers to put him to bed behind his back and he didn't know this, but he didn't know it. So the last two years of his life as he's leading up to the point of his death, which he kind of stops me dead on there. Like you don't need to go there with it because it's not as it seems. So he still has agitation with that. It's been 20 something years, 94. It's been about 24 years, 23 years, 23 years. It's been quite a while since this happened, but there's still a feeling of, he's showing me when he went out of his body and there's like, like, holy shit, where am I? Like, I don't know where I am. I don't know how this happened. There's not even a recollection, which can happen if you commit suicide. You can pop out of your body and not understand what you did because the act of itself of committing suicide is something that um, you might not want to face when you cross out of your body because the moment that you face it, you will realize you've made a mistake. So there's, there's that, but I don't think that's what it is actually. I literally feel like he don't know. He doesn't know, I was about to say he don't know, he doesn't know how he got out of his body. He is unaware of the circumstances leading up to them. Now, he is saying he was crazy. He is saying, not crazy mentally ill, but acting crazy up until his death. He was causing trouble. Um, he was causing chaos. He's laughing at everybody that thinks that he jumped the fence to get out of that rehab. He's actually laughing. He walked out the door. He didn't jump a fence. He got out. He smooth, he sweet talked and got out is what I'm seeing. He could be very, very, um, what would the word be for it? He could be very, very cordial when he needed to be. He could be very convincing without being obstinate or, um, you know, pissed off or angry or whatever. He would go between these moods. He was, ex he was so smart that in conversations, he could be extremely sarcastic without you recognizing what he was doing. Like his A game in his mind was pretty smart. He was pretty clear headed with what he was going to say and how he was going to say it. And sometimes he just said things to shock you, shock people, shock anybody. So he was uh, like a shockosaurus person. He would say something and it was like, I'm going to say this just to see how you react to it. He lived off of those feelings. He was very, um, just very emotive with it. So the Virgo side of him, I'm sure shut him down emotionally. And then the Pisces cancer side, Pisces sun, cancer moon side of him probably was dying to feel. So he went between this logical feeling side and then the drug side run out. But he, basically, I'm going to say this to you. When he supposedly committed suicide, I'm not really feeling that. And he's shaking his head no. I don't know that he knows what happened because he's telling me that he was drugged first. Okay, so I don't feel that he is aware of what has happened or nor has he been showing it. It feels like there's bits and pieces. He is laughing because he is saying that he's going to get the last laugh. I have no idea what that means because he's on the other side, but he is going to get the last laugh. Whatever that means, I don't feel that he set himself up to shoot himself, although the behavior leading up to his death would suggest that he did. But he did that on purpose because he wanted to piss you off. Not you guys I'm talking to, but whoever the you is. He wanted to piss people off. He wanted them off his back. He wanted to be a risk so they would leave him alone. So what he's saying is, look at me, I'm crazy. I'm taking my clothes off. I'm running down the street. I'm escaping from rehab. I'm shooting up. I'm not going to be sober. I don't want to listen to you. You know, fuck you like this. He's doing that like a, like just pushing you away. This is a push pull. He's pushing. This isn't really who he is, but he does not want anybody telling him where he has to go or what he has to do. So this is what he's doing. He is making me know that a lot of the behavior was being puppeteered around him. Um, he's saying that he was like living with a mental terrorist. That's what he's saying to me. <laughs> he's saying that 
Um, I really hope he's not talking about his wife, but I'm just going to go with it. I'm not even going to ask who it is. He's saying he was living with a mental terrorist. He was living with somebody that was eroding his mental or emotional security and playing head games with him. Somebody was putting things in his either food or drink behind his back or without his knowledge, okay? So basically poisoning him but not trying to kill him. This to me feels like people that won't take their medication and so somebody in the house like puts it in the applesauce like you do for a dog. You put it in their food and wrap it up in a piece of cheese and pretend that you didn't just give it to them and then they, they catch it and they spit it out. He feels like this to me. He feels like he was on guard with what they were doing to him. And he said the murder scene, I'm sorry, that's a Freudian slip or whatever kind of slip that is. He's saying the suicide scene was set up. So how he died and how he was found was set up. It was set up and he didn't die immediately, which is why the gunshot happened, okay? So he doesn't know how or why he ended up there. There was drugs first in the body and he was unconscious but not dead. So he did not die right away the way that they think that he did die, he did not die. And he's telling me the story's been changed. The story has actually been changed since he passed. Now, I don't know about that because I can't remember what I read when he passed. I know what is out there now, but he's basically saying that it has changed. Okay, now he's asking me to focus seriously. He's taking me down this, this wherever he wanted to take me, okay? Like, it's very much his story. That's, that's what I do when I'm reading their energy. He's like directing my head back over here. But when I'm reading someone's energy, I'm not really concerned with who did what or why they did it exactly. I want to feel the emotional texture of the experience because that lets me connect with the soul. That's how it works for me. I can't just go straight up in my head analytically. I've got to feel. What he's showing me is about 16 months before he passed away, okay? So before he ended up dead. He's using the word, I ended up dead. Like, come on. Okay, so I'm not saying he didn't think of killing himself. He talked about it to relieve stress is what he's saying. He talked about it quite a bit. He could have been slightly bipolar and maybe nobody noticed it or maybe it wasn't diagnosed that way or maybe they blamed it on another quote mental illness but there's something with him because he's talking about suicide quite a bit and always did. He always went to the sadder side of life and he was always doing things like this. So he could have very well had a genetic malfunction with the chemicals in his brain. I don't doubt that, but that's not what we're talking about here. This is entirely different. He's talking about the music he was making up until his death, and he's talking about having words, one with a lawyer. I see a lawyer around him, so this is a person I'm assuming who either works for the record company and is a lawyer for them or works for him. No, he's directing me ah, to the record company. Okay, so this is a lawyer or legal personnel for the record company. There is also a connection to somebody at the record company. These people are telling him, you cannot do this. <laughs> okay, I'm assuming they're talking about his drug addiction, but he's saying no. He's saying pen to paper and what he's writing, they don't want him doing this. So he's trying to take himself in a different direction. This is happening again. I hear this so much with these musicians. He's trying to write something differently, do something differently, be seen differently. He doesn't want to do this anymore. He says, it's not fun for me and I'm not feeling it. I'm not feeling it. I can't feel it. I keep using my hands because I think of like um, texture, touching, tactile. He's very much like that with his emotions. He can't feel it, doesn't want to do it is what he's saying. So there was some kind of legal contractual thing brought up to him to let him know that he has to do this or he will be doing this. I'm seeing that. And it's not something he wanted to acknowledge. He's like, I don't want to acknowledge this. I just, I, I'm not gonna do it. I'm, I'm not doing it. He's like a little kid. He's like, I'm not gonna do this. And he didn't feel he had to do it, but he know, he knew, okay, um, he was talking to people at the end, the last part of his life, he was talking to people and he was talking to them about what he was planning on doing and I have a feeling he was overheard. Now, really, to me, there's one person that could overhear him and I feel like it may have been his wife, okay? So I'm talking about Courtney Love. I feel like she overheard something and didn't want that to stop. Um, 
there's a lot of sadness when he connects to her energy when I feel it. Um, he's extremely protective of her, protective of his daughter. He's extremely sad by her. So there are aspects to her personality and her behaviors that he's, that's actually like a betrayal for him. It's a big betrayal. I think he's literally talking about who she slept with though. Um, I feel like she slept with people while she was with him that weren't him. Uh, I feel, that's what I feel like. Cause I started to say it feels like a sexual betrayal, but my energy just gets really dark. And it, I feel if I'm correct in what I'm saying that whomever she was sleeping with and there was more than one and whomever she was talking with and there was more than one, um, counterparts to him but not in the music industry so she may have been sleeping with somebody who was connected to somebody the lawyer the person that she was the person that the record label people whoever she may have been sleeping with somebody that was also with them so this to me is another musician male musician he's got a different kind of accent i don't think he's american if he is american he sounds more british to me or european so i'm gonna <laughs> He is American. He sounds British or European. How's that for not being American? But he feels like that to me. And it feels like Kurt didn't have knowledge of this. And he kept talking to his wife. So people kind of warned him about that relationship only because of the way it affected him. So the way the two of them were together and they warned him about it, but he wouldn't hear it. Like he's like, I'm not going to hear it. But at the same time, he's saying when I first saw her, I knew she was for me. Like I knew it. I was drawn to her. I, I went to her. So he's kind of showing it the way that I see things when, when I see somebody that I recognize on a soul level and it's like an electric, um, it's, it's like they're lit up for me. I, I recognize them. I know that they're here for a reason. I see them. I see them on a soul level. He's saying that with his wife. He saw her and then he tried to avoid her. He is such a misdirection person. He's like, I had to shut her down. So he walked that way. She walked that way. So I feel like there was some um, discord between them or she maybe even felt like he wasn't really interested in her, but she kept trying. I feel like this is an ego thing for her. They were magnetically drawn like this. Okay. So I'm going to say this to you. I feel like he was the empathic one and I feel like she was the one that wasn't empathic. So I'm basically saying I feel like she had... I'm going to say it. Don't get mad at me. If you're a fan, forgive me. I might be reading this wrong. I'm only doing what I can do. I feel like she may have had narcissistic tendencies or self-focused promotion tendencies so strongly. And I feel like he was the exact opposite. So they went together like this, boom. Um, and I feel like he could feel it and he wanted to put the brakes on it big time and go the opposite way because he knew once he stepped into it where that was taking him, but he stepped into it. And he stepped into it against other people. I'm assuming this means his bandmates and friends advice about this situation. And by the way, he's talking about his bandmates and he put up with a lot of shit from people. I mean, everybody was very fond of him and very nice to him, but there's a, there's a competitiveness there and it could have been a young man thing. We're talking about if shit, if he'd be 52 and it's whatever, he would have been like um, young, 30s, like late 20s, 30s, 27 when he died, but yeah, 27. So he would have been super young. So that's male competitive with him. I'm trying to add back in my head. I don't know why I'm not doing that right now. He's showing me something, showing me about three years before he passed. So 24 actually, showing me right then, showing me the band, showing me the confusion, showing me that the band started going one way and then switched and went another way. And at the end of his life, he was doing the same thing. The band was going this way and he was switching that way and he wanted to go off on his own. I can pretty much assure you of this. The music that he wanted to write was something that he could feel. That's what I'm saying. He was not feeling it. It was not fun. If it's not fun, I'm not doing it. That's why I like doing drugs. It was fun is what he says. He says it was fun for him but he wasn't doing all the drugs that they were saying. They were putting something in his stuff. He's like trying to push me back that way. Getting back to his wife, which he's trying to distract me from talking to, but I'm gonna get it out really quick. Getting back to his wife. I feel there was at least two other people she was sleeping with. It's none of my business, I really don't care, but this is how he's showing me this as being part of the reason why he passed. She was sleeping with people she was, these were all men. This wasn't like a bisexual thing. I don't know why he's bringing that up. I didn't think it was. Anyway, she's sleeping with other men. 
One is slightly older than him and I feel that that person is the European or the Brit that I feel is musically inclined. And then one is in a completely different entertainment field and that person is either the same age or very close to, but she's talking to everybody and everything is getting back and it's all getting like, remember that game telephone as a kid and it's all getting misconstrued. So there's concern and uprising about where Kurt's going, what music he's going to do, what is he going to do when his contract's up, where's the money going to go, where's the money going to go, where's the money going to go, where's the money going to go. This is a money thing. He feels like he's dead because he wasn't going to keep playing the money and if he died, the money could be made in a different way. He's the third musician that said this. So he's basically saying that his passing through his own actions and stupidity because he really felt like they were poisoning him. Somebody was drugging him against his will and he didn't do anything about it. He like let it go. He let it go. He is saying, I wasn't doing drugs like a maniac to kill myself. I was doing a lot of drugs and I probably would have ended up dead from an overdose because I did overdose and have overdosed. But it wasn't because I was trying to kill myself. It was because I was doing drugs. So drug addicts do that shit. They're not always trying to kill themselves. It's called reckless suicide on the other side. That's what I was showing, you know, in my own life when I've come across this. It's considered reckless suicide. So meaning the behavior is so reckless, it's going to result in the ending of a life. And yes, it's an accidental overdose, but is it an accident when you're really shoving the drugs in your body? And the answer to that is no, it's a choice and you don't expect the outcome. So that's how I feel with him. But he's basically saying that gun thing, the reason that he had the gun to begin with, because he felt like there was a threat coming at him. He was paranoid from the drugs. Yes, this is true. But he felt like he had to protect himself because he felt like he basically saying to me weirdly that he did have death threats. Somebody was talking in his head as he was getting ready to pass out of his body, meaning the weeks before he ended up dead, he was hearing or somebody was literally talking to him, telling him that he needed to protect himself because it was only a matter of time. He was becoming paranoid. That could also be the drug use. He was becoming paranoid. He was becoming weird in his thinking. Um, he wasn't really sleeping well and then he was sleeping a lot. He did have anger issues, but it was more like fuck you sarcastic issues than like anger, I'm gonna beat somebody issues. Um, he had those issues. I don't actually feel like he put the gun in his mouth and pulled the trigger. I don't feel that. I'm not saying it. I can't see it and he won't go there with me. Like I'm blocked from seeing it. I'm not seeing it. So I wonder if he understands how that happened. Um, he is saying, hmm. Okay, he's using the words, I haunt Courtney all the time, <laughs> but he's using the word haunt. He's not saying I visit, I say hi, I have dinner with. He's saying I haunt. I make her know I'm here. She has to deal with me. Okay, so what I feel with that is I feel something about her was talking to people about him and there was concern being brought up about what his actions, I mean, he was like a loose cannon. You couldn't control him. You couldn't control this boy. He was not gonna be controlled. Even though you would say a drug addict is controlled by the drugs, he still wasn't controlled by the drugs because he wasn't doing all the drugs that, that he was supposed to be doing. Like, so somebody was putting the drugs into him. So I don't quite believe everything that they're saying from what I'm seeing. It's a jumbled mess, but he is saying he's going to get the last laugh. That he's saying. He's saying, use your mind, pay attention. Look at the facts. Like, I didn't do this. This is not what I did. Now, sometimes spirits will come through when they have killed themselves and they don't want to acknowledge it. So they're not going to acknowledge it. And they're just going to tell me other stories. They could definitely do that. But I don't feel that. I feel like his wife was sleeping with two other men at the time. I'm talking two to four months before he passed. And I feel like she was telling like, you know, talking, saying this, like he's gonna quit, what are we gonna do with the music? Um, you know, this kind of thing. And I feel like there was a direct problem with the record company and a lawyer, management and lawyer, management team, lawyer and manager, lawyer and whoever, executive. I feel like there was an issue coming from that. 
I feel like this is why he's not here right now. I'm not saying anybody did anything because I'm not going to say that, but I feel like that's the reason he wanted out and away. He wanted to step away. He wanted to actually travel. He wanted to roam around. He wanted to do things differently. He wanted to go back to his roots. He was actually changing. He wanted to do something different. He may not have even stayed married. You know that he may not have stayed married and he may have even said, I'm not going to stay in the marriage. And that was a problem as well because he just had a baby. So I feel like there were so many things he wasn't going to do and he wanted his absolute freedom. I feel like he's dead because he wanted to be free. That's what I feel. That's what I feel. And that's what I'm getting. I just lost the connection right there. Um, once again, my name is Sloan from sloanbella.com. 